This is Wadi Rum. Home to Jordan Zelabir Bedouin population, it's a place where the old ways still exist, where camels still traverse the desert, and the windswept landscape dominates everything. But things are changing. With heavy industry and tourism moving in, I'm here with the Bedouin Heritage Project to find out exactly how things are changing. Our guides for this journey are Salim and Salem. The brothers take me to the local village where the Sheikh oversees a discussion about what they face in the future. The next generation wants to go to the university after a Bedouin will be finished. Mm. So only, the, the only new project you can do, you have to stop for Bedouin Forbidden they come to the to university, then they will stay better. But, you can't you know. but, but maybe it's not everybody. Maybe some people they didn't change. Hmm. Yeah. A lot so of always there is better same thing, but we cannot control. A lot of Arab student went to the university in France and all Europe. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. asked them to stop to worry, cover and like Sharia mm -hmm. So this is a problem so far. People who travel outside, even to Europe, they are still have culture, even the different city. They take care of the Islamic dress and this. But when they go to Europe, they bother them, they say you have to take off this. They are not allowed to. Some things never change, like camels, the primary mode of transportation in the desert. And how about the Bedouins' love of their horses? The thoroughbred is descended from the Arabian after all. This is uh, my horse, Jatan. I like to ride him because he's a very powerful horse. And uh, from uh, Arabian horse uh, breed. How long have you had him? So I had him for five years now. And uh, he won the race in 2002. And, and I really, I really like riding him, uh, especially in the desert here, because it's a very uh, open area and very uh, safe, and you can do a lot of things with the horse, and very quiet and very beautiful, enjoying the sound of silence and enjoying riding horse. Salim tells us about tribal custom as well. So tell me something, to an outsider, what exactly is a sheikh? Sheikhs, sheikhs he, he, uh, one man, he, he has uh, all the information about Bedouin tribe system and it's someone who knows the rules. And not everyone can be sheikhs, only someone uh, he is intelligent and his father told him a lot of things. So it's not automatic? Yes, it's not automatic. But even sometimes people, clever people and very uh, behaved people, they, their father not shakes, but after uh, knowing them, fixing problems and fair between each other, the people they count in them, and days and days and after and after the, he become shakes. So does that mean that you're likely to become a shake in the future? Yeah, I have older brother than me, so my brother I take he will be shakes, and uh, depends if he don't want to be shakes. But uh, anyway, my brother he's uh, I think he knows the rules. More, more all, all of my brother, and I think he will be Sheikh. Then it's time to head deeper into the desert. Part of the Bedouin Heritage Project's work is to provide a platform for those with no voice and preserve the intangible heritage of cultures under threat. That starts with a simple act of sitting down with the tribes who live further off the beaten track. Salim introduces us and we share pleasantries. Um, Ultimately, we are there to help them find a way to record their heritage for future generations, rather than doing it for them. <laughs> and as you can imagine, a drink in the searing heat is very welcome. Tea drinking is such a large part of Bedou culture, simply because hospitality is fundamental to the Bedou way of life. In the desert, you need to know who your friends are. Café Bedouin. Café Bedouin. Très bon. C'est beau. It always pays to know how to act at Café Bedouin. Watch what Salim does next. That means no more. And then it's time for us to go. 
Salim wants to show us a Bedou reservoir deep in the desert. And then we stop again. And then we meet more tribesmen. And of course, we drink more tea. And then it's back to business. Uh, this design, it's, for me personally, it's strange because it's just next to small rock. But usually the dam, when you make, when you make the dam, you make it like next to big rock like this, because then the floods, water, and the cracks come and collect water from everywhere. But even here also, they make a good aid if you look there. You see this small wall, and there, here to the right, you see a small wall. This is to collect the water from there and to come and. Uh, but unfortunately now, as the Bedouin uh, moved from desert, the new generation, they didn't care anymore about cleaning these dams. Uh, Bedouin, there are less, less number of Bedouins now in the desert, comparing with the past. For the Bedou, it's their knowledge of how to store water and where to find it that helps them thrive in this harsh environment. So this is Lauren Spring, where the tourists mostly come here. Uh, people who visit for one or two hours. And um, why we call it Lauren Spring? Because they just use it when they made the movie here. I think it's up there near the trees and come by the pipe to this tank. And this made also here for the camels and the Bedouins when they come from the desert. But there's other springs who, which is more beautiful than this place, which is based like you need two days or one day to see them in the end of the desert. This is the end of the desert, and the atmosphere here is more than a little reverential. spring in Jabal Qatar and as I said it's a little bit far from the village and the crowded place from tourists and it's very quiet like you see and we can make tea from this water and it's a nice place and I hope people will have more time to see more more you stay more you see better places in the desert <coughs> It's not just water that's important to the Bedou. And the brothers want me to experience some of these things for myself. Salim takes me for a ride on an Arabian horse. While his brother, a hunter, has something very different in mind. It's a skill that every Bedouin needs to develop deep in the desert. So, my friend Salem and I are swapping roles. He's going to be shooting the video camera and I'm going to be shooting the gun. So we'll see how I get on because uh, I'm not used to this particular model, but let's see. Not bad. <laughs> get better with practice. <laughs> now, it's time for something completely different. 